Hello, Bitwig certified end user and professional DJ, Vic Vapor with you, and welcome to my Bitwig Studio 2.3 course. Before we get started, I just want to say if it's the first time you're visiting the Martini Lounge channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and click on the little bell and we'll see you inside. Okay, welcome back. DJ Vic Vapor with you. Bitwig Studio 2, uh, just getting the basics done, you know what I mean? Getting the easy stuff going. Not sure what we're going to title the course yet, but uh, thinking of a couple ideas as we progress through. So anyhow, on this uh, particular video, let's take a look at what we originally started doing earlier in our, um, our um, course, if that's what we're going to call it. But in our earlier videos, let's go with that. So we were working with audio. And of course, you see I've got an audio channel that's blank here. Nothing's in there. So let's go ahead and combine audio and MIDI and see what we can come up with here. So I'm going to select the audio and we'll select this guy. I'm going to stop. Actually, I don't need to stop that. Yeah, we'll leave them activated. So we're going to select this guy. And of course, by now we know our shortcut on our keyboard is B, brings up our menu. And let's get some sort of uh, top loop. Again, um, we'll go back to our trust, tried and trusty beat port sounds. Hopefully, if you follow on along uh, throughout the videos, you've got this uh, collection installed by now. So let me um, audition a few of these. And one of the one of the let me um, let me one of the important things I want to bring up real quick is I mentioned it in an earlier video, but in case you haven't seen that one or you're just tuning into this one out of sequence. <clears throat> Down here, if you've got this little note guy activated, if it's deactivated, this loop will play back at whatever its current record setting is, and it won't match the project tempo. But if you activate this, then it'll match the project tempo. So what that allows me to do now is launch this scene, and I've got everything playing, and I can audition these, you know, in the same time frame or in the same BPM as uh, the project. See if we can find one I like. I think we can work with that. So now that I've already got it selected and we're in the contextual menu, I just hit OK, and it'll populate that audio loop for us. And now we've got that available and ready to go. So again, I double click it and bring up the editor view here. And I think what I want to do is work on some of the time stretching algorithms and experiment with a few of those just to see what we can come up with as opposed to just using the loop, you know, as it is. You always want to, if you're going to work with loops, you always want to try to somehow own it and make it your own. And one of the first ways I'm going to do that is if I hover my mouse right here, it turns into the magnifying glass. I can kind of scrunch it down a little bit and I can see the entire uh, loop here. And I don't want the entire loop. Some of the things that are going on near the end here are a little too busy, probably going to clash a little bit with a hi-hat pattern in the index clip we have up here anyway. So I'm going to bring this down and just stop it at three. So now essentially it's a two-bar loop. So let me play that back real quick and solo it. So... That's, that's pretty good. I think we got something to work with here. So let's go ahead and experiment a little bit now that we're inside of 2.3 and we've got all these new uh, stretching algorithms. Let's just see what they sound like. I really explore it with you a little bit. I mean, I've, I've learned them and messed around with them enough to kind of get the basics, but hey, let me, let's uh, kind of help you guys understand what's going on here. And we'll just listen and uh, whatever one sounds cool, we'll stick with it.
can hear a little bit of subtle changes going on there. Let's see what this echo does. Sounds pretty cool. And let's try another one. Uh, Pro. Looks like you can adjust some small uh, format and resolution stuff here. Then we've got the raw and repitch. The repitch is going to sound like a, a record player, and the raw is what we've been familiar with already within Bitwig. So I think I like this echo. I'm going to stick with it for a little bit. Let me hear it in the context of everything else, and let me adjust some volumes. Yeah, not bad. So there you go. Adding audio within your MIDI. So you're now you're combining a full, you know, project layout where you're using the MIDI format and the audio format in conjunction with each other. So all right, let's go ahead and move on to the next video.